Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Plant Your Seeds of Transformation podcast. I'm Donna Marie, author Donna Marie. I'm a coach, a perfectionism coach, toxic perfectionism coach, and I'm bringing to you today Wanda Duncan of Black Women Travel. I'm so excited to have you here, Wanda. I want to make sure that you have a chance to introduce yourself to everybody so that they will know who you are and what you do and why you're doing it. Hey girl, hey. Thank you, first of all, for sharing your platform. I appreciate the opportunity. I know this conversation is gonna be lit. Um, I am Wanda and I created a community for black women who want to travel. And we talk about how that impacts our lives. We center not just travel, but wellness and creating an online stream of income. So what that looks like is us talking about the challenges that we've gone through in order to step into this space where we say, we don't have to live like this no more. We don't have to have our nervous systems constantly on edge. We can travel, not just for vacation, not just for leisure, but um, make it more of a lifestyle so that we invite more of the things that we want into our lives. Um, and that includes ways to make money so that we're not in those toxic work environments uh, that will probably never change, no matter how many DI, DEI consultants they bring in. Um, and so wellness is at the center of all of that uh, in terms of the travel and also how we make our money. So that's, that's how it's been my days. I love what you're doing. You've been such a help and a blessing to me as an aspiring remote traveling worker right now. I'm a remote worker, but I haven't been able to really travel much yet. And so thank you for all that you're doing to not just, you don't just help us, but you really inspire us. And so I just want to thank you for that. Um, I know that uh, a lot of the people that I've seen you interview on your, on your video channel have been um, women who are part of your mastermind. Did you want to share about that? Yeah. So um, the community Black Women Travel consists of a weekly podcast uh, that I launched back in 2019. We have a group that I started back in 2017, which is the Black Women Digital Nomad Entrepreneurs Group. It's a free group on Facebook. Um, we also have an annual conference, the International Black Women Travel Jubilee. We just had our conference back in December. Um, while you may have missed the live joint, you can still catch the replay and be added to our private community, um, which will be more popping soon. We're also gonna be doing it again this year. It will be virtual again this year, it's in October. So look out for stuff around that. Um, and then January, I launched the Black Women Travel Mastermind. So what I was seeing was Black women have confidence challenges. Um, I talked about us being able to give ourselves permission to do this process, to say, I can leave, I can make money the way I want to make money. And so a lot of the work that I was doing um, or have been doing, having conversations, um, it was indirect. And I wanted a more direct way to take a person, take one of these ladies from point A to point B, um, if that's where she wanted to go, whatever her point A and her point B are. So that's how the mastermind came about. It is a weekly thing where we get together and we do coaching and we do co-working. We talk about those specific challenges, we, which is usually the mindset. And then we put some action to it. So that's what the co-working is giving them space, giving them some accountability, giving them um, the opportunity to ask questions about stuff, you know, like Canva. Sometimes uh, the challenges are tech. <laughs> uh, so the ladies are like all, all ages, right? And so they're like, how does this work? How does that work? But they get stuck there. And so they never do the thing that they need to do, right? So it's like, oh, no girl, go ahead, pop it open. Yes, you have to create a Facebook page in order to access Creator Studio, which lets you schedule stuff for free on your Instagram account. It's stuff like that, just really simple logistics stuff, but that would keep them hinned up for weeks or maybe months. Um, 
you know, stopping them from doing the thing that they need to do, which is show up because that's the only way that you have the transformation that you have. And I center all the work is travel wellness and entrepreneurship, but it's also about you. It's about what this process means to you and who you're becoming in the process. That's the most important thing. Everything else is juicy after that, right? The clients you get to serve, the people you wanna help, um, the volunteering you wanna do, the donations you wanna make in your uh, chosen passions, the impact you wanna make, all of that is, is the after effect. The most important thing, the most thing that's rich to me is that you have yourself that you're able to be grounded in yourself, who you are, what it is you want, how you envision your life unfolding, and you take your power back. Um, living life in America is disempowering in so many ways. From the bank to the school, to the job, to the hospital, to what, whatever it is you got to do at the store, it don't matter. Anywhere you go, everywhere you look. Um, is there systemic racism staring you in the face. And so this is a way to remove yourself from that and say, I'm not going to focus on that. What did Toni Morrison say? I'm not going to spend my time explaining because that's not the work. My work is to be me. And so that's where we focus in the Black Women Travel Mastermind is a way to give some focused energy and attention to do that. So I that's what I've been doing all year since January um, and I've been a bit more quiet in other places. So I'm also finding my feet <laughs> and finding my legs uh, when it comes to, you know, my energy disbursement um, and trying to balance, you know, doing free stuff for the community and being trying to be an inspiration for the community. Um, that cheerleader, I find myself in that role quite often because you can actually do it and you are actually in your own way. Um, as and that's what I've experienced as well for myself. I've been in my own way and I've had to make a way out of that. So I am I'm I'm getting there though. <laughs> so hopefully sooner than later to be able to have more attention everywhere and make accessible the things that I would love to still make accessible, but still be able to feed myself as well. And I think this is something we all it's just like, girl, just you go, I want you to do this for free. And it's just like, no, you actually need to get paid for that because that's your time and your energy and whatever, whatever. So yes, all of that. <laughs> Amazing. You said so many things, but I want to start by asking you, um, and you kind of touched on it a little bit but I want to drill down on it. Um, the main topic we've been drilling down on lately on the show is toxic perfectionism. What does talk, the words toxic perfectionism, what do you think of when you think of those words? I think perfectionism in, is innately toxic, right? Black women, we have Black people have this messaging, you know, twice as good, three times as good, 10 times as hard, like whatever that's drilled into us, just like money don't grow on trees or whatever else that's been handed to us generation after generation. Um, code switching. We have been taught from our mothers and our mother's mothers and our mother's mother's mothers because of their experiences, we have to show up in a certain kind of way. But that's not us and that's never been us. And we are very fortunate, we are very blessed to have been born in this time, if not a hundred years in the future, where it may be just, I don't know, five, five degrees better. Cause child, you know, they don't move <laughs> no type of fast, but we weren't born then. So we have so much more access. We have so many more resources. We have so much, so much potential for opportunity or actual opportunities that we can grasp onto. So what we're doing is unlearning. We're unlearning, we're rejecting, we're putting down the capes, the strong black woman thing. We're asking for help. We're getting therapy, we're getting coaches because we understand that our little friend group is cute for the Friday night kickback. But if you're trying to get somewhere for real, for real, it's gonna take more than what you've been doing, you gotta switch that up and invite like-minded people, invite people who have gone where you're trying to go 
into your life in a more substantive way so that you can unlearn this perfectionism that directly impacts what you allow yourself to even try because like if you think you have to pop out with a fully formed anything without understanding the process that it takes without understanding that it's going to take trial and error you you might not even like some of the things that you uh want to try you you start doing it it's just like you know that sounded good in theory but that's not actually me and it's okay to let that go and let me go figure out or let me go explore not necessarily figure out explore what is for me is giving yourself that width and breadth and um chance to understand what's for you when it comes to travel for example you may not be the move abroad type where you just want to expat and like you know hold up in Tulum or like wherever the girls are moving these days right Portugal that may not be you you may want to be a digital nomad where you you know travel every three months or every six months uh, you may want a home base when it comes to your business uh, you may not want to be a consultant you may just want to do package stuff you want to sell merchandise or already created courses um, you may want to create a tv show you know people in our community have done all types of things because they gave themselves permission to do all types of things because they stopped believing that they have to be perfect in order to show up to do these things they understood and this is difficult very difficult they understood that who you are right now today exactly as you are is enough that you know more than somebody else somewhere else that you have value to offer that's not wrapped up in a degree it's not wrapped up in continuing education it's not wrapped up in a certification that you got the goods right now to make a huge transformation in your life and that is that's a, a, a giant a giant thing for a lot of ladies to accept is that like i'm good enough right now i don't have to do all this extra stuff which is just busy work it's just busy work it's all just busy work it's just a distraction it's just you trying to make yourself on the outside look like you have enough when you actually do have enough you don't need validation i mean you're not trying to be no doctor and like do operations and stuff like that like it's not that deep that's what i'm trying to get to right and what a gift what a gift when that light bulb comes on when women do start saying i don't have to be perfect and i'm gonna put this offer out there and i'm gonna tell people i'm doing this thing or that thing and see how they respond what a gift when people actually start responding because you believe in yourself and they see you believe in yourself and they're trying to get some of what you got now because you've made space for yourself and what it is that you want you're giving people permission to do that and a lot of them want to want to financially support you in that endeavor and it keeps going like talk about the match one match light in the next match like how amazing is that to be a part of that chain so yes girl please <laughs> stop it drop it a lot of women are just they're not just holding themselves back because they don't believe in themselves. They're, it's almost like they're waiting for somebody else mm -hmm. to validate them and believe in them. And that's part of the perfectionism cycle too. Have you seen that? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The online world is tough and it can be tough specifically for Black women because I mean, the world ain't never really celebrated us, but we've celebrated each other. And that's where community comes in. That's where um, switching up your influences and people who are able to touch you in that way comes in because you are taking into consideration the company that you keep and where that criticism is coming from. You don't need that validation because you validate yourself. One of my favorite therapists, her name is Dr. Spirit. Um, she says that you're not a car, you don't need validation. Like it's not going, that's not how it comes. You validate yourself. So with that, it doesn't matter. 
people can say things and they're going to throw rocks possibly, but just even the fear of that can't make you flinch because you're bigger than that. You're stronger than that. And it can't touch you because who are those people? They don't have themselves. They're not trying to do the stuff that you're trying to do. There's a, there, there's a quote that I've seen more than one time says something along the lines of those people that are criticizing you, they're sitting on the sidelines watching. They're not doing anything, but yet they feel they have a right to criticize you. Brene Brown. We can't, we can't let the people that are just sitting there on their hands, yapping their jaws, have a say in what we choose to do. It's our choice. And we have a right to live our lives. We have a God-given right to live our lives in the way that resonates with our own hearts. And that's hard for a lot of women who are stuck in toxic perfectionism to, to do because they're waiting for all conditions, including the people around them to line up and be perfect, but it's just not gonna happen. It's never gonna be the perfect time. So um, yeah, I'm gonna skip this next question. But the next question is, um, when you think about the Black women leaders that you lead and, and maybe even your own self, um, we already talked about it a little bit, but let's talk about it a little bit more. How does toxic perfectionism impact the different areas of there? Specifically, we're talking about women who are remote, who are working or are doing businesses remotely. How does toxic perfectionism really impact um, their lives once they start to release that, once they start to see that, once they start to wake up. What have you seen? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll say also that you want people to see you who don't even see themselves, right? Is another way of saying that, like a short way of saying that. You want people to see you who don't see themselves. When you start seeing yourself, when you start breathing into your body and processing some of the things that you've experienced, if you are traveling, uh, I talk about community a lot, not as a buzzword, but because everyone needs support. Everyone needs specific kinds of support. Like we talk about a team, right? And a lot of stuff can come up. In America, usually what we're doing is we're surviving, right? And what that looks like is you go to work and you try to kiki with your friends and maybe you have, you know, a gym membership or like sometimes you cook or, you know, you're taking your naps or whatever. And you may be in therapy, but you may not be able to fully process the experiences that you've been through because you're still in the environment where it's familiar and a bit maybe just known like familiar right and when you come out of that things are new and you're having different experiences and you'll just be washing dishes minding your own business and something will come up right it's not stuff you're actively meditating on because that's what the brain does the brain keeps us safe it's going to hide a bunch of stuff from you that's just that's how it gets you to make money so you can eat and sleep you know somewhere it just shuts it off it numbs it 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 discards it uh not discards it but just like puts it under the rug but that rug will come up my love and so <laughs> what i've seen is as black women are putting those things down, it's ugly because you're gonna have to feel things that you weren't able to feel at the time because you were trying to turn that dollar into 15 cents to make that 15 cent into a dollar. 
Don't don't tell Tupac. Don't tell Tupac. Um, (laughs) don't tell him. Um, but but that's that's what happens. You have so much space. You have more space than you've ever had in your entire life, probably, because you're not rushing. Because you're not exhausted. And so stuff will start to come up. That's where community comes in. That's where a therapist comes in. That's where a coach comes in. That's where your team comes in to help you put these things in perspective. You're, it's going to feel bad. But you'll feel good on the other side of it. You'll feel lighter. You will know yourself more. You will honor yourself and the life that you want more because only you know what you've been through. And some of that time will be spent remembering what you went through and having compassion for yourself. Like, man, I should have had support. Like, man, they should have been there for me, actually. Like, I shouldn't have had to deal with that on my own. So you start to advocate for yourself in retrospect. And it's gorgeous. You start to say, "Uh uh-uh, that's not happening anymore to me. Like, I'm going to be more present with myself, present with my feelings and honor my intuition and understand that I'm creating these experiences and I'm choosing every day to have this this situation or these people or like whatever it is in my life, but I can make a different choice because like back then, like I was just trying to, you know, get through, I'm not trying to get through no more. So I'm operating from a different space. And so change is always uncomfortable. It just is, it just is, <laughs> it just is. Um, get away but it's also it. good. Yeah, but it's also good. Okay. It's also good to release. And like, how much release do we need? And it's not necessarily gonna happen at Essence Fest. Like that's cute, that's nice, right? <laughs> but you need something deeper, you need something to reset your nervous system, to allow your body to let go of all that stress and all that trauma and all those hard times and all the tears that you didn't have the space to cry and all the things that you didn't know you should have had because you didn't know no better. So it's amazing once they start to, to make the space for that to happen. I always suggest, you know, creating that team beforehand. But I think really, and honestly, like there's only so much you could do because again, you're just trying to make it to another day. So like you're you're torn a little bit, but when you make space for all of you um, to walk into a room, all of you to walk into your work, all of you to walk into your travels, like all of you to walk into your wellness, then it's a different experience. Absolutely. I know that um you you kind of went there just a little bit we're gonna drill down a little bit more we're gonna talk about culture the black culture for all of its beauty sometimes have you seen where it can be a little toxic and hold black women leaders back and, and keep them in this perfectionistic cycle. Now, Donna, <laughs> now, Donna, <laughs> now, you know, it's this, it's this mentality. It's like, what happens in this house stays in this house. And that's what's kept us trapped mm-hmm. from being able to talk about these experiences. Me too. Ain't, ain't no black women sharing their me too stories before me too, before a black woman created me too. Okay. Because what happens in this house stays in this house, like the embarrassment, the shame. Um, And that's just that, you know, for black women. We have partners that we've dealt with. We've had church that we've dealt with. We've had, it's it's everything, man. It's everything. Getting fired or not getting promoted and like all this stuff that we might not have felt comfortable talking with our peers about because of jealousy, because we doing a little bit better than somebody else. And so like, what what right do we have to complain about this or that? Um, We've made ourselves small in so many ways in order to not ruffle feathers 
but really it's just not being in community with the right people because the right people would never begrudge you whatever experience that you're going through that you're trying to get on the other side of and that has made our lives more miserable so it is that what happens in this house stage in this house we have the the phrase the crabs in the barrel mentality like i don't want you to do better than me for real like i'm gonna be jealous of you um what are some other things and sometimes it's not even necessarily that i don't want you to be better sometimes it's i don't want you to be different Mm, yeah i think we should be homogenous if you're not this kind of black person you ain't really black you can't have a black card like you can't you're not supposed to be in an anime you're not supposed to be in the country music or you know cowboy stuff <laughs> you're not supposed to talk white you're not like there's a bunch of stuff i suppose but like we know better than that we're not the monolith that hollywood or tv would netflix would have us believe that we are like there's all types of black people out there so absolutely that part but again like you just ain't around the right people find your people so being willing to create your own culture would you say your own black culture would you say that's a way to frame this if you don't see it out there like uh the internet has given us access to so many more people like i come from a small town and like no, it's only going to be, <laughs> you know, and it, but sometimes even a big city, you can get lost in the sauce there. So sometimes the internet is a great way to connect with people around a specific topic, right? Around specific interests. So if you don't see it, sure, yeah, create it. But it might be out there in some way, shape, or form. I find that as I've continue to grow and mature uh, emotionally, psychologically, um, that community has come to me. Like I just started connecting, connecting, connecting with like-minded people. But when I was stuck in my perfectionism and I'm, and I'm not perfect, I'm still you know, growing and learning in this. But as I continue to release that baggage, it's like the people that I need now in this season of my life, they're, they're here. And um, I know that your, what's the name of your Facebook community again? The Black Women Digital Nomad Entrepreneurs. So the Black Women Digital Entrepreneur group on Facebook, it's a free group. And of course you have to answer some questions to get in. And it's for Black women. It's for Black women and not necessarily, like, for instance, I'm not necessarily a nomad yet. I'm aspiring. I would love to do that one day. I don't know if that's going to happen for me or not, but I'm aspiring. Yeah, because I've got some things I'm working out. So we're going we're gonna to work on this thing. I don't know what it's going to look like. Let's put it that way. It may not be, like you were saying earlier, it may not be uh, where I go live somewhere else, but maybe I'll be able to do like a few weeks you know, but um, one of the great things about this particular group is that this is a group where you can learn and also encourage each other. One of the great things that has come into this, this realm with me is I was already planning to do a mentorship program, right? And Wanda, saw my post and was like, wait a minute, I was going to do a mentorship program too. So now we're starting to collaborate on getting a mentorship, a formalized mentorship program. Anybody can be a mentor or become a mentor or a mentee, right? Anybody can do that. But when you can do it from a more formal um, journey and make sure that the people actually understand what works for Black women leaders specifically regarding mentorship, it can be that much more impactful. And so that's what um, I'm helping to work on 
you know, to put that together. And I think a lot of times people just assume that anybody can be a mentor to any mentee, but that's not true. Um, a lot of mentors have certain ways of communicating that won't necessarily line up with what a specific mentee needs. And so understanding that and being able to match people together that will fit well together, that's super important to have more a more formalized, um, effective mentorship program. And so I'm really looking forward to um, seeing that come together. <laughs> We're still just in the very, very beginning stages. And um, thank you, Wanda, for you know, embracing that, embracing my, my ideas with that. I appreciate that. You have so much, and I am extremely excited once I get my head together to have you lead because you're the only one who has stepped up in the group in that kind of way. Um, I was thinking about that mentor. You said like, I was like, I was going to do this. No, I was not. <laughs> <laughs> that, post that, I, that post that I made about mentorship was years ago. It was years ago. And it, it was the confidence thing. Like, it was like, oh, well, I want to be a mentee, but like nobody was stepping up to be a mentor because of the confidence thing. Like, I'm not really traveling or I don't have a business or like whatever it was that they thought that was holding them back. And that has been part of my, my challenges, understanding the mindset of the folks in the group because I just think y'all are amazing. I think y'all are the dopest. I see all the potential, but that's not where y'all live, unfortunately. And so I'm so happy that you said that and you are making space to, to make it a more tailored experience. I also want you to get paid for this. So that is also part, which wasn't a part of your plan, which needs to be a part of your plan. Because that's time and energy, you know, the matching. So we're going to talk about that. But I am, yes. <laughs> Donna Donna is on the main line. Hello, I'm picking up the phone. Um, I just got to put my bags down first. <laughs> I got to put my bags down, girl. And then I'm picking up the phone. But I, I am super excited um, to bring that kind of expertise, like the matching. Like, I'm super excited about that. And you're doing the co-working on Thursday evenings super excited about that. So there will also be more member-led events. I want the ladies in the group to feel comfortable leading stuff. I have tapped the ladies from the mastermind specifically because it's like, okay, girl, let's get you out the nest, honey. <laughs> um, but you know, like everybody's just not comfortable doing that. But women who are like you who are in the group and they see you as an example of someone who's like, taking the lead and I want them to know you are a black women travel approved supported um promoted you are you know fully backed so we're gonna get there but yes what an example that you're setting what a fantastic I'm extremely appreciative of you and your energy that you bring to us it's my pleasure and I'm so excited for the different women that have um, stepped up to ask for that mentorship, they want to be mentored. Um, I'm excited for them, you know, and I think that a lot of a lot of the women that want to mentor, it's just a matter of we gotta we gotta have an official formalized meeting with them. So it's a matter of getting them to respond and 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 because we're all in different time zones, we're all we all have our own busy lives and we got to get everybody to come together just at least just one time you know it's just putting it out there that they're not going to organize that that's the thing it's like we got to put that yeah. Yeah. so you just put a time and a date on it and it's it's done like just let them know where to meet and it's all good <laughs> so that's we'll do. yeah we'll do we'll do yeah i know that um both of us you and i both have been really busy and we've had some challenges with connecting uh, time-wise. And so I really appreciate you making space for this. And um, I've had challenges in the past because my life earlier this year was just crazy. Um, was working a job that was just draining all my time away and uh, unpredictable. And then I was also in school. So I have a break now, a mm -hmm. bit more relaxed. 
and then I'll be back at it again in, a, in about a month. But it's all good right now, though. I got a little time open, so I'm working on some things. So we're going to put all that together. Yes. But I know that, I know that um, in terms of the mentorship that um, I see you providing through your mastermind and everything, one of the people that you talk with, I can't remember her name, but I just remembered I was so inspired by your talk with her because she used to think, that I think it was not Nadia. I think Nadia. I think so. She, yeah, she was um, of the mindset that eh, I don't really have anything anybody wants to see on YouTube, and now she's doing this thing, you know. And she just really inspired me. Her story really inspired me because I see how your mastermind helped her, um, helped her to to come into her own right to own her her. Um, brilliance you know to to own her uniqueness and to know that you know what she had to share was valuable because of her unique perspective about something that other people have talked about but she's got her own unique perspective and I love how your mastermind did that it helps her to to embrace that and to take authority and stand in her power and do the thing to do the thing so that really um help me to see the value of doing masterminds. So I just wanted to announce I am going to be starting a mastermind, but it's a unique mastermind. Um, the difference, the, the mastermind will be based off of the similar Pomodoro style um, uh, co-working that I've been doing for free with friends, mm -hmm. but this will be a mastermind. It'll be a guided time, um, a time for us to get together and work on our stuff. A lot of ladies are getting on the phone, chatting it up, talking about whatever, whatever, but they're not doing anything with themselves, <laughs> with their goals. So this is the time to come together and focus and get your work done and have the support that you, that you need for that during that time. Not just the support from me, but from the other mastermind group members. It, these are small groups. So probably less than 10 people. Um, they come together, they support each other and they get stuff done. I see the value of it from watching the fruit of what you've done. And so that's why I made a decision to do it. And my mastermind will be really early mornings. It'll be really early mornings and it's not free. Um, Got to have some skin in the game to get in this because we want to make sure that everybody is focused and that I can sustain it. You know, if I keep doing stuff for free, it's not sustainable. And I've been there before and I'm not going to do that, keep doing that anymore. Um, I've started, I was the co-founder of a group for women, for mothers. And it was awesome. We had, it was a huge group. I mean, as a result, I ended up with over a thousand followers on Facebook. Didn't know near one of them, barely. <laughs> That was in another part of my life. I gave that up because it was not sustainable. We did not monetize that at all. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was fun. It was great. Met a lot of great people, mm -hmm. but it ended up being something that was um, just for a short season because it wasn't sustainable. If you don't monetize, you can't sustain it for, for um, over a permanent period of time, right? So... Yeah, so I'm looking forward to, to doing that. I'm looking forward to potentially joining your mastermind. I'm working on getting my, get my coins in place so that I can invest in that. That's something that I need. I need that support. I need, I need that. And I appreciate all that you're doing to make sure that these ladies out here um, are getting actual support. They're not just getting a whole bunch of information. They're getting actual support with doing that work. So thank you for what you're doing to serve them and help them. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Is there anything coming up? I know you said that you're you're gonna be doing a um, event. Can you tell us yeah. more about the event that's coming up? So the International Black Women Travel Jubilee is the premier and the first um, conference to center Black women travelers. And a lot of us are, it was meant to be in person, <laughs> but mm -hmm. 
but them streets got the ick ick. So <laughs> I'm just trying to make, you know, responsible choices for the world, basically. So um, yeah. I'm going to keep it virtual, but it's happening October, uh, Saturday and Sunday, October 1st and 2nd this year. Very excited about that. It's going to, this is the third year. So it's going to be a continuation of travel, wellness, and online entrepreneurship. We're going to get you in your body and centered. We're going to talk about what it means to travel there's someone doing a session on hair this year which Mm. that's us all day I know right Um, yes her name is Paula I'm really excited to have Paula with us this year and uh online like creating a, a stream of income which is as simple and as hard right as simple as you taking something you want to do and putting a price on it that's all it is at the end of the day and there's a bunch of other stuff you could add on top of that but I love making that space for us. It was really amazing this last year. We had a community chat after each day. And what that was, was just us being in a room all together and people, the ladies feeling free to speak about whatever it was that they wanted to speak about. And I feel like they were saying some things that they may not have even said out loud to themselves. You know, maybe it's just something they thought or was lurking somewhere in the back of their mind. And that's where community was happening for me. Um, that We had, you know, our sessions. And then at the end of the day, just a few sessions. I don't pack in a whole bunch because I want you to actually take action. I want you to actually let this information seep, seep into your very bones where the marrow, the magic of your marrow resides, right? And so like having session after session after session in multiple, multiple days, um, I don't think benefits anybody. I think it's information overload and I'm not interested in that. So we have our sessions and then we have our community chat where we can possibly start to integrate. We can talk about the day and we can talk about whatever it is you wanna talk about. So we're gonna follow a similar format this year. (laughs) Um, So I've done two masterminds this year. I'll probably do just one more. And that will probably start in July, maybe August. So those are the two upcoming things that are happening for our community that are big, the conference in October and um, another mastermind in July. I'll say July. So yeah, thank you for asking. No problem. So that's the International Black Women Travel Jubilee. Yeah, IBWT, yeah. Now, am I thinking correctly? Were you featured in Condé Nast? Not Condé Nast. Um, we have gotten some press. Um, <laughs> so the community, like aspects of the community or the community itself has been in Afar. It's been in Essence. It's been in um, Fodders. I wrote a piece for Fodders. It's been in Fodders, Forbes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Forbes and Black Enterprise. Um Travel Noir, like we've gotten some some good press uh, mm-hmm. just in the last six months. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're you're filling a need, and so that press is gonna keep going and increase because Black women need support from other Black women to understand about these traveling streets. It's different for us, you know, and we need to know what's the tea <laughs> so that we can be. Um, encouraged to pursue those things that we are currently unaware of. I know that's what's been a real blessing for me. Um, I did, and I do know there was someone who was in Condé Nast too, and I can't remember who it was right now, but it's another uh, Black woman leader, Condé Nast. It seems like they've started to try to do more niche travel um, articles and features and things. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to, you know, hit the diversity tip with with the travel. So that's good to see, you know, major publications, Fodor's, I know is one too. It's good to see major travel publications that are interested in our stories, mm-hmm. you know? And um, I know that there's they a, need to a be. Black woman. <laughs> they need us and our stories. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they do, they do, they do. There's a black woman in Panama who, I can't remember her name right now, but she was, I don't even remember who interviewed her. Uh, but she is somebody on YouTube that interviewed her. It's either Stephanie Perry or Delia um, 
one of the oh, ladies Saturday. from from yeah one of the ladies from um, vicarious and or from exodus summit interviewed this woman from panama who is a uh, professional photographer and a philanthropist and she started something called black women photographers it's a whole organization that <sighs> features black women photographers they have like a, a website where they feature like two black women photographers. And so many, I won't say many, but some of these women are traveling the world mm -hmm. and taking images that are being featured in major publications, major media. And you don't even know it's a black woman. So to see um, somebody that's come forth with trying to make sure that they're featured and that we know that these photographers are black women, they're not necessarily taking pictures of black people. Mm -hmm. Now, some of them are, but not all of them, you know? And so that's just so refreshing. So you've got now, you know, a lot of media coverage trying to make sure that they're more inclusive of uh, Black women, specifically Black women. So um, it's great to see your beautiful face there. And where are you? Uh, Tbilisi, girl, I have to think, Tbilisi, Georgia. <laughs> Tbilisi, Georgia, yeah. and it is about what 12, eight hours is eight hours ahead of Eastern Standard Time where I'm at. So I got up really early and Wanda set aside her time to be with us and we appreciate you. We celebrate you and the Black Women Travel, uh, excuse me, the International Black Women Travel Jubilee is coming up in October. I hope that everybody will go over to, tell, tell, us, tell us your website. It's Black Women Travel, and that's T-R-A-V-L. So BlackWomenTravel.com. Black Women Travel with the L. Mm -hmm. com. Make sure that you all go check out Wanda Duncan and all of what she's doing and engage. Get, get in that group. Uh, the name of the group again? Black Women Digital Nomad Entrepreneurs. <laughs> Black Women Digital Nomad Entrepreneurs Group on Facebook. And she has Discord too. Discord's not as active, but if any of you all are on Discord, make sure you look over there too. All right. Is there anything you wanted to say before we go? Um, just to thank you really for the space, for speaking to Black women about perfectionism and your experience with it and how to let go of it. Um, and also for letting me share a little bit of my life. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. I appreciate you too. You're welcome. And I appreciate you too. And um, ladies, if you definitely want to become a digital nomad, get in that group, please get in that group. It will help you, encourage you. It'll help you to see things differently. It'll help you gain perspective. You may be thinking some things right now, I can't do this, I can't do that, but that's not necessarily so. But until you change your perspective on it, you will keep, you will just be stuck right there, just thinking, hey, I can't. So get your, get your community together, join this community so that you can start connecting with people that are like-minded and mm -hmm. expand your thinking. Um, you know, Wanda was talking earlier about how sometimes it's just a matter of getting out of your comfort zone into some place that's different. And just that can open you up, open up your thinking, open up your insights and your awareness. So ladies, join the Black Women Travel um, uh, website, and then you can find all the links, blackwomentravel.com without an E. All right. It's awesome to have you here. Thank you so much again. God bless you with all your travels. Stay safe over there in those European streets. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. You Bye -bye. too.